All right, welcome to part two of my Playing Major League Soccer in Football Manager video series for Football Manager 2019. I am Uncle Sam. This video is going to cover the, the MLS squad, the roster, as we in America like to call it. And a lot of you will see all of this and you'll think, this is really dumb. And I'm not going to disagree with that. Some of it, a lot of it's it's going to be a struggle to understand it or to make sense of it. But I would also preface it by saying this, that in the United States, we learned a big lesson back in the 1970s, 80s with the North American Soccer League. When that league was running, you had, you had a lot of people who had money, and in the early part of the league, they spent it. They went and bought guys like Pelé, um, Beckenbauer. I, I could I could list a lot of guys that you would recognize, big names that you would have heard of. And the reality of of well, what happened is that the league failed. And what the league back then failed to realize is that it to make a a soccer league success to succeed. Excuse me. You're you need more than just big name players. It's not necessarily about about the big players. It's a lot of what football is around the world and what makes football so great around the world is the connection that the fans have with their home club. And that's, I mean, when you, when you think about what football is to you if you're from another country, being a part of your club is, is probably the most compelling part of it for you. It, it's what makes you show up and sing for 90 minutes and stay all the way to the end, even when your team is getting ran off the field. You have a connection with that team that, that's almost emotional. And in the North American Soccer League, they had big name players, but the fans didn't have that same connection with their teams. And then you started having, when teams weren't making enough money, they started moving um, from one city to another. And when that happens in England, for example, with like a, with Wimbledon, a big there it's a big it's a national travesty almost when a team moves uh, and, and leaves their fans behind. It, it's not exactly smiled upon here in the United States when it happens in our professional leagues, but it's it's certainly not the same. And so NASL failed to realize that. And so the league failed. And so when Major League Soccer started, one of the main things they wanted to do is re was really just survive. Uh, survive long enough for the fans to hopefully grow and gain that connection, that emotional connection with their club. And so that's why all these really get, exist. It's, it was to prevent uh, all of the, the series of events that led to the failure of NASL. And while a lot of these rules seem silly, it's kind of hard to argue with the product. Um, they have survived now for 25 years, which <laughs> kind of makes me feel old because I can remember the opening day of MLS. I can remember uh, Eric Wanalda and, and um, Alexi Lawless playing for the Revolution, all that. So it, it, it has survived 25 years, and now it's expanded to there's by, by 2021. There's going to be at least 27 teams. Who knows? They may add a couple more um, between now and then. And they, Don Garber, the commissioner of the league, says that he could see the league growing to uh, up over 30. So, which, you know, in a way is exciting, but again, it is a kind of a testament to all of these things that are going to seem dumb, but are there for a reason. So, let's go ahead and, and start with the MLS squad breakdown. The best way to look at it is, is there are two squad categories. The first squad category is your senior squad, and the second is your off-budget squad. And your senior squad, these are your first 20 slots on your roster, on your squad, on your team. And they're going to be the, these 20 players. Well, at least, well, these 20 are going to count. These are the players that count against your salary cap. All right, so your senior squad covers the first 20 slots. And again, they count against your salary cap, which in the first season is $4,035,000. And I have that in U.S. dollars, obviously, if you're from another country. Um, that number is going to be different, but because it's the U.S. League, I went with the the U.S. dollar, uh, so that that's what the value is. So your 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 senior squad, your first twenty slots, cannot exceed four million thirty five thousand dollars per year. By the way, that's per annual. 
It's not per week as it as that figure is, is measured in around the world. Um, but so your contract types that fall under the senior squad category, your designated players, right? You have two designated players. You do have an option to buy a third for one hundred fifty thousand dollars, and most teams will because they want to. Your designated players, and we'll look at them in a moment. But they these are going to be your top players. These are your David Beckham's. These are the ones that you can bring in. You can pay a huge salary as much as your board will allow. And, but it'll only count a certain amount against the cap. And your other type is your senior contract, which the maximum there is, I believe, 480000 a year. And also your senior minimum salary contracts. And these are, if needed, to fill out the 20 senior slots. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But these are your designated players, senior players, and your SMS. These are the three contract types that fall under your senior squad. These are the guys that count against the salary cap. Your off-budget squad, these are slots 21 through 30. And, and I did it this way because I feel like this is the best way to understand it. These 10 players, if you have all 10, do not count against the salary cap. So these are guys that you can kind of play with. You can experiment with. If you can get, get a player to sign one of these contract types, he's not going to hurt you. So it's, he's not going to count against the cap. So it's not really, it's not an, a, a, a total waste of money, right? And so um, these do kind of make it interesting. So first of all, your first contract type are your reserve contracts. And we'll get into some of the specifics of those in a moment. But you can have a maximum of six, no more than six reserve contracts. These are, these are kind of your minimum salary guys. Um, the, the minimum salary on a reserve contract, the, well, the, the amount of a reserve contract is $54,500 a year, uh, which is peanuts, and it doesn't count against the cap anyway. So you can have six, but no more than four of these can be non-homegrown reserve players. In an MLS, a homegrown player is defined as a player that you sign from your academy. So you have to, in other words, if you have six reserve contracts, then at least two of those have to be homegrown players. And now you can have more homegrown players, but you can't have any more than, than uh, four non-homegrown reserve players. And that, what that is is the league is trying to encourage teams to sign more homegrown players to develop their own talent in their academies. And some teams are doing a great job of that. And I'm thinking specifically of the LA Galaxy, um, Atlanta United, they've just, they're a brand new team, but they, some of the players they've brought through their academy already have, are pretty phenomenal. Um, and a lot of the guys in the, in the past, but uh, the league is trying to move towards developing and even selling players. Uh, another contract type on your off-budget squad are your senior minimum salary players that are not in the first 20 slots. <laughs> now, you're probably seeing that and thinking, well, that doesn't make any sense. Are SMS players uh, senior players or are they off-budget players? Well, it kind of depends. If... So you have to fill that first 20 slots before you can have an SMS player be off budget. So if you have 20 guys signed to designated or senior contracts, then all of your SMS players are going to be off budget. But let's say you only have 18 guys that are signed to senior contracts or designated contracts. That means that, that two of your SMS guys are going to be registered as senior players to fill those first 20 slots. And finally, any player that's on a Generation Adidas contract is an off-budget squad player. No matter what his contract is, he's off-budget. He doesn't count as a, as a senior player. And we'll talk about the Generation Adidas contract in a moment. So designated players. What are designated players? Well, they call the, this was put in to, so that the league could bring in David Beckham. They wanted to... St- once the league got to a point where it was fairly stable, there was not as much fear of, of clubs going bankrupt, uh, they decided to allow clubs to exceed the, the maximum salary, which senior players have a, a maximum salary. And we'll get to the kind of the why that is, but there were teams who wanted to bring in guys that were going to be, they, they were going to have to pay more money to. And of course, the big one that everybody knows is David Beckham. There's no way the Galaxy were going to bring in David Beckham at the senior maximum salary. So what the league did was they said, okay, every team is going to get one designated player. The, for this player, you can exceed 
the minimum or the maximum salary. But the club has to pay the difference. So the league only pays up to the maximum salary and the the player will count as a maximum salary player against the cap. So for example, now the maximum salary is $480,000. If I went and and signed a player for $5 million, he's only going to count $480,000 against the cap. So so again, they did that to bring in guys like David Beckham um and it's worked out pretty well. They're kind of the league sort of now is criticized as being like a retirement home for guys like Beckham and Wayne Rooney, who now plays for DC United. But it it has helped. It's improved the quality of the league. It's improved the sort of the perception of the league. And so there you go. There is a limit of two. You can only have two designated players, or you can buy a third for one hundred fifty thousand dollars. You're given that option in FM at the end of every season. Do you want to buy a third designated player slot? Most of the time, you would. Um, they will count as one of these senior squad players, no matter what, slots 1 through 20. Now, there are three types of designated player, and this is where it does get a little confusing. But the first of all, you, you're your regular designated player. You're in this. These are DPs who are over 24 years old. Their salary cap impact will be $505,000. Or if they're acquired during the July window, it's only about half that, 253000 Now, the league started to want to get away from this perception of just buying a bunch of old guys with a designated player contract. So they, they added the young designated player contract. This encouraged clubs to go find players who were younger, who still had some, was, it was before their prime, to you. Because even a lot of those guys, they don't want to come to MLS and... and whatever play for the obviously the lower salary and so the league to offer incentive to go get younger guys they they put this in so the difference is that the salary cap impact for a young designated player is only two hundred thousand dollars or one hundred fifty thousand if acquired during the july window and there's even a third young designated player who is 20 years or younger and their salary cap impact is one hundred fifty thousand, no matter what and so those are your three types of designated players. Um, and that they're going to be, you know, you, if, you, if you're going to give somebody a designated player contract, no matter how old they are, they better be ready to contribute because they are obviously occupying quite a bit of the salary cap. Your senior contract players, these should make up the largest part of your squad. The reality is they will. Um, their maximum salary is $480,000. And their entire salary is going to count against the cap, unless that amount is reduced with the general allocation money you receive, which we'll talk about allocation money in the next video. But the it's kind of a brief sum it up. The league gives out general allocation money that you can you can spend to buy to buy players uh, from other MLS teams. Um, you, you, it's, it's it's essentially an asset that you can use to trade with teams in the league. Or, in this case, you can use it to buy down a player's impact on the salary cap. So if you have a guy signed at $480,000, you can buy his salary down to, say, $300,000 if you have allocation money to do so. Now, these senior contract players must occupy one of the senior squad slots, the 1 through 20 slots. You can, they cannot be on your off-budget squad. All right, and then you have the SMS contract. Their salaries are going to be six, sixty-seven thousand five hundred a year. Um, they will occupy an off-budget slot if the senior squad has twenty or more. So it's, it's I already kind of went over that. But if you if you have twenty players on the senior squad, then your SMS contract will not count against the cap. If an SMS contract player is on the senior squad, that means their entire salary cap will count against the salary cap. So, for example, if you only have 19 senior squad players, then one of your SMS contract guys is going to count against the cap. But it, it, the good news is it's at least only going to be 67500 All right, so the reserve contract. These are off-budget guys. They must be 25 years old. They, their salary will be $54,500. And you can have no more than six. And as I said, no more than four of those can be homegrown players. 
The reserve players will occupy the off-budget squad, slots 21 through 30, and therefore they're not going to count against the cap. So again, when you're playing an FM, if you can get a guy to sign a reserve contract, you can kind of take a risk. Um, if it's a guy you're not sure about, hey, give him a reserve contract if he'll take it. Maybe he turns out to be really good. Uh, maybe he can even contribute. You know, play him in cup matches, see how he does. So the reserve contracts allow you to kind of play around with a guy without worrying about him counting against the cap because you're the guys that you have that are counting against the salary cap they better contribute they better be prepared to step in and play some real minutes because they are counting against the cap all right so generation adidas um kind of give a brief history of the generation adidas contract so one thing that kind of started happening was you you have guys who and this these are guys who are drafted. Uh, this is a status given to twelve players who have entered the MLS Super Draft, or they offer them to guys to to college players who they who are either going to come out of college early or who are graduating. And what it does, it kind of got to where some of these. Guy, the, the best players in college soccer were choosing not to go to MLS because they, they were getting better contracts in other leagues. And some of them weren't even that great. You had guys going to like Sweden um, just because they were going to get a higher salary there than what they were going to start with in MLS. And then they figured, well, and if I'm good enough, I can come back to MLS and, and get the contract that I want. So MLS wanted to stop that. They wanted the best college players to enter the MLS draft. So they started offering these guys, uh, they said, okay, no matter what your contract is, we're gonna make it so that the teams that your contract will not count against the salary cap for the team that drafts you. So that gave that gives teams incentive to draft these players because hey, you can give them a big contract and as long as they're a generation Adidas player, their salary is not going to count against the cap. So that did help keep some players in MLS rather than going abroad, signing somewhere else. Um, players do eventually graduate from the Generation Adidas status after, at least, after I think, at, at most four years, um, some sooner. But Generation Adidas players only occupy the off-budget squad. They will not be on your senior squad. So if you're, if you're in the MLS Super Draft... And you are trying to decide between a couple guys. If one of them's a GA, draft him. <laughs> um, it's at least worth looking at to draft him because, again, he's not going to count on your on your salary cap. And most of the time, these now the reality is that sometimes Generation Adidas players do not pan out. They 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 they, they for whatever reason they were not scouted properly by whoever assigns the generation adidas players and so and i'm talking about real life here and that's accurately reflected in, in football manager some some ga players are not good and they never turn out to be any good but some uh do some are pretty good and so that's you know what a fun little challenge um now again they are worth taking the risk on because they're not going to count against your salary cap no matter what you pay them and so uh, they're at least worth looking at in, in MLS. So uh, continuing into the, now we can look at the player categories. Um, these can be, really most of these can fit into any slot. So you have your international players. MLS teams start with eight international player slots. And another interesting thing about MLS, this makes MLS different from leagues around the world, is that international player slots are assets. They can be traded to other MLS teams for any number of years, up to five, or even permanently. So if you have a great player, you can actually trade that player away and get a permanent international player slot, which that's big uh, because obviously you, know, you, you can bring in some really talented international players. Now I'll say this about international players, because you do only have eight they kind of better be guys who, who are either immediate contributors or you, who you know are going to develop into contributors because you only have eight. And so it's best not to waste an international player slot. Um, when I play FM, and this is just me, I do try to acquire international player slots. I, I'll even let go of a guy who I really like if I can get a permanent international player slot because 
that's 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 permanent. I, that gives me a slot that I can have for years. Um, so now for the three Canadian teams, Toronto FC, Montreal Impact, and the Vancouver Whitecaps, uh, players with Canadian nationality do not count as international players. And in fact, you have to have at least three. I think three of your thirty have to be. Oh, you can have no more than twenty-seven non-Canadians. So at some point, if you if you're going to have a full squad of thirty with one of the Canadian teams, at least three of them have to be Canadian. Um, homegrown players. These are players signed from the club's academy. There is no limit to how many homegrown players that can be signed. Again, MLS wants to encourage the MLS clubs now to encourage their own talent. Or, I'm sorry, <laughs> to develop their own talent. And this is a way to get them to do that. Homegrown players can occupy either the senior squad or the off-budget squad. Um, there's no, there no permit designation for that. So with all that said, this is a, a sample of what your MLS squad might look like. At the top, you see two designated players uh, who, are, are, who are also international players, guys you've signed from overseas. And this sample squad, and again, this is entirely hypothetical, they, you might also have a third DP who is a young designated player. Now, if your third, third designated player is a young designated player, you do not have to buy the extra DP slot. That's only if you want a third uh, overage designated player. And then you see the next four slots are international players, and they are senior players. And if you'll notice, you get down to where you see a senior player who is a homegrown player. Again, homegrown, they can be senior or off budget. Now, there is only they this roster, this squad only has 18 senior or designated player contracts. So, two of those senior minimum salary players are on the senior squad. So, hopefully that kind of helps to make sense of, of the SMS because you after those two, you do have an SMS player who is in, who is on the off budget squad. And he is international. Um, and then you've got a senior player who is a Generation Adidas player. So even though he's senior, because he's a GA, he's not on the senior squad. He's on the off-budget squad. So hopefully that may helps to make sense. And then you got the reserve player. And actually that squad is, is illegal <laughs> because you have five reserve players um, whenever you can only have four of six. So really it should be that two of those guys are homegrown. So... That's a general overview of the MLS squad. In the next video, I'm going to get into the, the labyrinth, the, the maze that is MLS player acquisition. So um, that is one of the areas where a lot of people struggle with playing MLS and football manager. So make sure you watch that video if you have, a, if you have issues there. And so this is Uncle Sam FM signing off.